If you like our video, click the button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides, visit us at www.teachucomp.com. Setting the inventory item defaults lets you specify the default settings when creating new items for invoices, bills, and purchase orders. To set the inventory item defaults in Sage 50 Accounting, select Maintain, Default Information, Inventory Items from the menu bar. To set general inventory item settings, click the General tab. To allow duplicate UPC or SKU codes, check the Allow Duplicate Values in the UPC slash SKU field checkbox. To allow duplicate values in the Part Number field when the item's preferred vendor is the same, check the Allow Duplicate Values in the Part Number field when the item's preferred vendors are the same checkbox. To set a default item class for new inventory items, Select the desired class from the Default Item Class dropdown. To set default actions when ordering items, click the Ordering tab. To include quantities from purchase orders when calculating the quantity available of an item, check the Include Purchase Orders when Calculating Quantity Available checkbox. To set what quantity should be used for out-of-stock warnings in the Sales Invoice or Receipt windows, select an option within the Sales Invoice slash Receipt out-of-stock warning message section. To set what quantity should be used for out-of-stock warnings in the Sales Order or Proposal windows, select an option within the Sales Order slash Proposal out-of-stock warning section. In the Auto Creation of Purchase Order section, you can check the checkboxes to automatically create purchase orders for both dropship and non dropship transactions, excluding proposals, if desired. To set the default general ledger accounts used when creating the different types of item classes and select the default general ledger account for freight, click the GL Accounts slash Costing tab. For each item class, shown in the rows, enter the values into the white columns to the right. Gray columns mean that the value cannot be entered for that item class. To select the income account to which sales of that item class should be attributed by default, use the GL Sales slash Income dropdown. To select the Inventory or Wage Expense account to which the item class defaults, use the GL Inventory slash Wage dropdown. To select the default Cost of Sales account for the item class, use the GL Cost Sales dropdown. To select the default Costing method for the item class, use the Costing dropdown. To set the default expense account for freight charges in the sales slash invoicing window, select a choice from the GL Freight Account dropdown at the bottom of this tab. To set the default item tax types, which are used to classify sales taxes for state reporting and to set the default shipping methods, click the Taxes slash Shipping tab. In the Item Tax Type list, Enter the names of the default tax types, and then check the adjacent tax checkbox if that tax type is taxable. In the Ship Methods list, enter up to 10 default shipping methods from which you can select when entering customer and vendor transactions later. These methods should be entered from top to bottom from most frequently used to least frequently used. To create up to five custom fields for inventory items, click the Custom Fields tab. To enable a new custom field for items, check its Enabled checkbox, and then type its name under its adjacent Field Labels column to add that field to the inventory items records. When you create the new items later, you can then enter the specific values for each field you create.
to create pricing levels, which set different item pricing categories in sales forms. Click the Price Levels tab. You can create up to 10 price levels to vary the pricing of an item based on a calculation you specify. These let you charge different prices for the same item to different customers. To create a price level, type its name into the first available level name field. Ensure the enabled checkbox is checked to enable the pricing level. Then click the gray edit arrow to the right to open the default price level calculation window for the pricing level. Then use the use dropdown to select the basis for the price level. Then use the AND dropdown to select whether the price level increases or decreases the price from the selected basis by an amount or by a percent. Then enter the amount or percent into the adjacent field to the right. Optionally, to select how to round the calculated prices, then use the round price dropdown and enter a specific cent into the adjacent field if needed. Then click the OK button to save the price levels calculation, which then appears in the price levels default calculation field. To apply your inventory defaults after setting them, click the OK button. Remember to click the subscribe button to see more of our videos. See our full suite of courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides at www.teachucomp.com.